How's it going? I'm Catherine from Dryer Days Art Studio. Thanks so much for being with me today. I wanted to do a quick intro to my 24 inch in diameter amethyst round painting because this will be another time lapse and I don't do any talking during the actual video process. Here it is. As you can see, it's got a nice shine to it. It is 100% dry. The shine is from the Krylon UV resistant top coat that I like to use. There will be a link to where you can find that in the description. And also these lovely stones, the semi-precious and the crystals that I used in this geode, I got them from a lovely Etsy site and she, the woman that runs the site has been phenomenal to work with, very quick shipping, the products I am just thrilled with. So the link to her Etsy shop will be in the description as well. And of course I use my pouring medium, which you can also find the recipe in the description. Here it is, I love it. Okay. Okay, so the process of making this geode, first of all, you want to make enough paint. So I knew I would want about 20 ounces of paint total. I knew I was going to use five colors. Therefore, you want about four ounces of each paint color if you're using five. And that's only if you want equal amounts of each paint. Let's say you want more of a dark color, then you'd have to make more of that and factor that in against the other paint colors. Uh, so what I do is I get out my electric scale I get out my plastic cups or paper cups that I'm gonna be mixing in. I set the cup on the electric scale, I zero it out so that the weight of the cup will not be factored into the measuring. I then add my paint colors. Now let's say I wanna do a dark purple, and so I'm gonna use like um, a deep purple and I'm gonna put a little bit of black in. I will eyeball it while it's on the scale. And so with this, let's say, if I want to do four ounces of each color, I would bring it up to either 1.8 or two ounces. I then take my homemade pouring medium and I pour that in until the scale reads 3.8 or four ounces, because that would be equal parts. I do this for every color while I have the scale out. So I go through all five colors, set them aside, mix them thoroughly with the pouring medium very, very thoroughly. You wanna make sure that pouring medium and that paint are completely mixed together, um, especially if you're mixing a couple different paint colors together. You wanna to make sure everything is very thoroughly mixed. I then go in with spring water and add that and mix it until consistency. With the geode pour, I do like it a little thicker just because you're not manipulating the paint as far as you are um, with like a tree ring pour or with a dirty flip cup. It's not quite going as far, so I make it a little bit thicker just because too, you might be adding glitter or stones or something else and you want that paint a little thicker to kind of hold things in place. They do take a while to dry. I have one sitting here drying right now that I did a day and a half ago. It's still a little bit wet, but you do come out with a beautiful painting in the end. You will see there's some parts where I'm kind of mixing paint in a little cup. So what I'm doing there is, let's say I want a little bit of a ribbon effect. I will put a let's say a deep purple, and I will take white and just drizzle it on top. I'll then add a drop or two of dimethicone silicone or treadmill silicone and take a stir stick and do an X through it or a star shape, not mixing the paints together, but just giving a ribbon effect look in there. And then I will add it to my canvas or my board and you'll see it'll give a nice ribbon effect that silicone won't really make cells necessarily. It'll kind of provide a lacing look, which is very beautiful in these paintings. I do wait until the very end after I've manipulated my paint and gotten it exactly where I want it before I add any glitter or stones. In the beginning when I was trying this technique, I would add the glitter as I went and then I'd manipulate the paint and glitter would just go all over the place. So I do highly recommend that you add those sort of adornments, if you will, at the end of the painting when you're kind of wrapping things up um, and then just let it sit and let it dry. And the stones will kind of dry into the paint and stay where they are unless you're really heavy handed with the stones um, and in which case you may need to go in and use like a resin or even hot glue to get them in there to stay. I did then use the uh, UV top coat once the painting was 100% dry. So at like day three, it looked completely dry and I still waited like two more days before I did the UV top coat because you just want to make sure that it is 100% bone dry before you varnish it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope that answered any questions. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or come over to my Facebook group, Acrylic Pouring and Fluid Painting. We're having an awesome time over there. Everybody's so nice and we've got brand new people to this who have never done a pour before in their life and they're just 
trying to get all the information that they can about what they need and supplies and stuff. And it's just a really nice community. Um, if you like my tank top that I have here, I sell them in my store, uh, spreezy.com slash dryer days. They're pretty inexpensive, only about 25 bucks. I have t-shirts, um, I have a linen tote bag, and I do have apparel for men. And thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep on pouring. So I added a little bit more glitter and some more stones. There's amethyst on here, halite, clear quartz, and hematite. Hope I'm saying that right. The black is the hematite. Let's see if we can get clear. Part of what I love about these is the texture. Just beautiful.